Hey friends, how are you all? Welcome back to Be Pharma Wise. In today's video, we are going to discuss a little bit about the limit test for sulfates. I'll try my best to explain the principle behind limit test of sulfates in a very brief manner. So stay tuned. <music> For limit test of uh, sulfates means we need to control the impurities of sulfate. So what we will do is uh, we have already discussed the basics of limit test in the earlier video. So if you have not checked that video first go and check it because it will clear your basic concept about what is a limit test and what is the basic idea behind doing the limit tests. But if you have uh, watched that video and if you know what the limit tests are then let's move on and find out ki how to do the limit test for sulfate impurities. Now the idea is pretty simple here. What we will do is we will take the soluble uh, so sample of sulfate impurities and we will subject it to reaction with barium chloride in presence of acetic acid. Now what it will do is when you treat your sample containing sulfate impurities which are in soluble form with barium chloride you can see it will form a precipitate of barium sulfate now being a precipitate this is the insoluble form of sulfate okay and these chloride ions will set free now this reaction requires certain conditions to maintain like we carry out this reaction in presence of acetic acid why because the solubility of this precipitate barium sulfate is very much affected by the concentration of the acid so we need to maintain the acidity of the medium and for that reason we are adding acetic acid in the solution another thing which we add in uh, limit test for sulfates is ethanolic standard sulfate solution or ethanolic sulfate standard solution now the concentration we uh, take here is 10 ppm of sulfates okay now what does this do to uh, this solution of ethanolic sulfate standard solution is added in the concentration of 10 ppm to increase the sensitivity of the test one more advantage it offers is it contains ethanol and ethanol prevents the super saturation okay and thereby it uh, helps in producing a uniform opalescence which then gives us better uh, results in terms of comparison of test and standard or um, sample and standard okay one more point i want to tell you is the ionic concentrations initial ionic concentrations are determined or taken in such a way that the solubility product of barium sulfate gets slightly exceeded now you know when the solubility product is exceeded uh, via the ionic concentration then it starts to precipitate so initially the concentration is so taken that the ionic product of barium sulfate is exceeded it actually gives you presence of some amount of barium sulfate initially which acts as a seed for complete and rapid precipitation of barium sulfate so by seeding the process of precipitation happens at a faster pace and on a complete level so this is how the reaction goes on so what we will do now in the um, sample nacelle cylinder we will take our um, sample of or sample containing sulfate impurities and we will add barium chloride then acetic acid then ethanolic sulfate standard solution etc and we will do the same thing with the standard solution we will add the same things to standard also we will make up the volume 250 ml 100 ml whatever and then we will observe them transversely against a dark background and we will compare the opalescence produced in both of them if the opalescence produced in a test or a sample is less intense than the standard the sample passes the limit test and if the opalescence produced in the test is more intense than the standard then the sample is failing the limit test 
so it's that simple so this is how the limit test for sulfates is done and this is the principle behind the limit test of sulfates did you get it if yes do give this video a thumbs up and tell me in the comments below which limit test you want me to make next okay so keep watching be pharma wise and thank you so much bye bye